we know that uh, Philippines, our country, is known as a Christian nation, as implied in the preamble of the uh, 1987 constitutions, Constitution uh, of the Republic of the Philippines. Well, we believe that this constitution was being articulated for us to follow and for us to, for us to have a, you know, a direction as a country, as a nation. Well, at this time, actually, in our country, there are many things that we need to consider. To pray, particularly, as it was being presented to us. And we hear, actually, sa mga news, uh, napapakinggan po natin yan. Like, the change of system. No? Naririnig po natin yan. Change from democratic to federalism. Well, maugong po yan. And also the, the Bangsamoro uh, law. Basic law. We're hearing it in the news. And just a few days ago, I think that's yesterday or the other day, the Soggy Bill. No? And there are many Christians who are acted upon against this bill. Okay? Well, we need to study and we need to learn its implication to us as followers of Jesus. As followers of Jesus and the Bible and make a stand, we need to make a stand, and we need to make our position on this. Well, I will, I will not discuss about these things, about this uh, matter, but one thing I would like to share with you is about, you know, implementing rules or, or law, no? Or regulations. Actually, I remember one time in our house, because we have a new, we have a new, uh, rice cooker. So, I told my, my family, kasi po ako po ay tigas sa bahay, no, at this point of time. Tigasaing. <laughs> well, of course, not only me, but all the members of the family are doing the same thing. Well, I, I told them that, okay, this is how we should do it. No, this is not a rule, but it is the right thing to do, okay? So, we need to do that for us to have a, you know, good food to eat and enjoy the rice that we eat. Well, you know, after the Last Supper of the Lord Jesus and the, the disciples, the Lord gave a new command. Well, it's not exactly a law, but a command. The Lord gave a new command, and that command is love as I have loved you. Love as I have loved you. And basically, this is the main topic that we have right now. Love as I have loved you, as I have loved you. Okay? And I would like you to, if you have your Bible... Uh, I would like to invite you to open with me in uh, John chapter 13, verses 30 to 35. And may I request everybody to please rise in respect upon the reading of his words. I would like to read it and just follow me as I read. The word of God says, As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. And it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, now is, the Son of God, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me 
and just as I told you, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Lord, speak to us. Speak to us. Amen. You may now all be seated. Well, the context of this passage basically is very clear. Um, it was the time, actually it was after the washing of feet of the disciples. It was also, it happened at the upper room after they had the Last Supper or the communion. No. And it was the time after after Jude or Judas left the room to betray Jesus, to betray Jesus to his enemies. Now, the key passage in this, in, or the key verses in this passage, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. No, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Well, be, before dealing our key verses, which are verses 34 and 35, let's deal first and see the truths in verses 31 to 32. No? So, gusto ko pong makita muna natin yung mga unang talata. Para po maging mas maliwanag po sa atin for us to make clear what this passage means to us this evening. Well, verses 31 and 32 says, When he, or when Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. Well, the very context is that the Lord Jesus is, was telling about his coming death. And yet, in spite of foreseeing what will happen, and that is the cross, what he saw was the glory that was being prepared for him and for the Father. Wow. He saw the glory, no? And for him, the glory, his glory is not exactly the future. But he saw the glory while he was, or while he will be crucified on the cross. No? So I believe the glory of Christ is revealed on the cross. The glory of Christ is revealed on the cross. Well, to us and to the people, the cross is a symbol of shame. It is a symbol of shame. But now you know, look. We have the cross here. The cross is a symbol of the glory of Jesus. The cross is a symbol of Christ's glory. Why? Because it was the time when he was crucified. It was the time when he turned down, side up. Well, I use this term. Binaligtad ko po ng kaunti. He turned down side up the fall of man. Why? In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? And that is the great mystery happened. 
while He was there hanging on the cross, that we receive abundant provision of God's grace. From fall to grace. Not only that, at the cross, He turned upside down the power of Satan. He turned upside down the power of Satan. And that's why we believe, and I personally believe, which I would like to present to you, that the cross or the glory of Christ is being revealed on the cross. Hebrew chapter 2, verse 14. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death, he might destroy the devil who has the power over death. Who was, who has the power over death. So it is very clear, brothers and sisters, that the glory of Christ is revealed on the cross. Not only that, the glory of God is revealed through the cross. The glory of God is revealed through the cross. Why? Because the justice of God is being revealed. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the, gift, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. But who was the one who paid that penalty? It was Jesus who paid the wages of our sins. And that's why the justice of God is revealed through the cross. Not only that, the holiness of God is revealed in the cross, on the cross. Matthew chapter 27, 46. No? Actually, it happened when the Lord Jesus was hanging on the cross when he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because talks about the holiness of God. And because of that holiness, God Himself, God the Father, was not able to look to His Son, you know, at that very moment because of the sin of the world that He was holding on like, while He was hanging on, on, on the cross. So the holiness of God is revealed but most of the time, we look at this, at what happened? Why the Lord Jesus, why the, why the Father left the Son while He was hanging on the cross? Actually, brothers and sisters, because of God's holiness, He was not able to look to His Son. Because His Son was, you know, carrying all the sins, all our sins while hanging on the cross. Well, the holiness of God is revealed. Not only that, the faithfulness of God is revealed on the cross. Why? Because it, it, it was, it was uh, a realization of God's promise. The cross was a realization of God's promise to us. Ja or Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I will make you. And the woman, it, the Lord mentioned this, no? After man fall into sin, or man fell into sin, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head. And you will bite her offspring's heel. It happened on the cross. It happened on the cross. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Remember that the Lord your God is the only God and that He is faithful. He is, He will keep His commandment or covenant and show His constant love to a thousand generation of those who love Him and obey His commands. It's about God's faithfulness. He remains faithful. 
Actually, 2 Timothy chapter 2.13 says that if we are not faithful, He remains faithful because He cannot be false to Himself. Most of the time, we fail Him. But remember, but remember brothers and sisters, God never fails us. He never fails us. So, the cross, the glory of God is revealed through the cross because the, the justice of God is revealed, the, the, the holiness of God is revealed, the faithfulness of God is revealed, and the love of God is revealed on the cross. The love of God is revealed on the cross. John 3.16, we know that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Ibinigay niya po ang kanyang bugtong na anak. Romans 5.8 But God has shown us how much He loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. That Christ died for us. Brothers and sisters, brethren, whom I love, Actually, it is the very reason why God says, why Jesus said, love as I have loved you. Love as I have loved you. Well, in verse 33, my children, I will be with you only. No? In verse 33, it says, My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, where I am going you cannot come. Well, the context of this passage is that Jesus is about to die and be resurrected after three days and will be ascended into heaven. It is not about the disciples, not to be with him in heaven. Or it was about Jesus who will depart. No? So, konting panahon na lang po. And that's why they had this last supper or last dinner. No? Well, the question is, how, where, or how do they see the love demonstrated when he was about to be taken or departed from them. For example, somebody to tell to you, you know, I love you, but I need to go. Parang it contradicts. Well, sa atin pong maraming mga OFW, uh, na mga kababayan, madalas po natin naririnig yan sinasabi po nila sa kanilang mga anak, which is very much true. No? Sasabihin po nila, I love you, that's why I need to leave. Pero alam niyo po, mga kapatid, napakasakit, di ba? Napakahirap. Parang hindi natin ma-reconcile. Particularly those, those kids, those children whose parents are OFW. It's quite difficult. No? It's quite difficult. That's why I believe the disciples was not able to suck, to suck the the idea of you love us and yet you're departing and yet you're living. Well, the very answer is that the ultimate demonstration of love is not the departure itself, but his death on the cross. Because before he leave and before he died, he will be crucified on the cross. And that's why I believe that the ultimate demonstration of love is or was on the cross. The second is that the Lord mentioned that, that these disciples, that we, the disciples of Jesus, will see and experience the love of Christ no? That we see and experience the love of Christ so that we may be able to share it 
to others. Meaning to say, the vertical love of the, the vertical love for for Christ, our vertical love for Christ must be expressed horizontally in our love for others, in our love for other Christians and non-Christians or non-believers. Moreover, the horizontal love which can be seen by everyone is proof of our vertical dimension, of our love to God. Okay? Well, parang hindi to mama yung line, no po? Pero dito po sa akin, no, it is doon po sa verse 34. It says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. It's a new command. The Lord said that it is a new command. But let's see. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, it says, in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Is it new? Is it new commandment? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Is it a new command? Yes, it is a new command. It is a new command because first it received a new object. You know why? When the law was given to love others, to do not seek revenge, it was the object of this command is for their, you know, just from among them. Just from among the, the Jews, from among the Hebrew people. No? Kami-kami, sa amin lang yan. Kami lang ang magmamahalan. No? You know, you know the reason why Hitler killed thousands of millions of Jews? No? Well, according to one historian, he said that one of the reasons was it's because of what the Jews learned. And that is to love themselves. Well, I don't know how uh, true is it, or it is, but, you know, it is new command because it received a new object from, your, from love your neighbor to love your enemies to love one another. So it's not, the love is not only for your, uh, for your brothers and sisters, but the love is, will be extended outside even to your enemies. That's why it is called new command. Not only that, it is to be exercised according to a new measure. What is the measure? The old measure is the law. It is because of the law. That's why you need to follow the law. But the new measure is that the Christ measure, and it is, he loves us while we are still sinners. The measure that Christ used is the measure of grace. That though, you know, we don't deserve it, and yet He loves us. He loves us so much. And the third one, why it is new 
commandment because it is made possible by a new power. And that power is the power from the Holy Spirit. It is not to be done because it was written on the law. It is followed because we are determined to follow Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit who is, who is working in us and through us and act according to His purpose and according to His pleasure. Well, practical application. No? The nearest neighbor that we have that we have right now is basically our our the people just the people around us in the context of the family no how we can express and how we apply this love the word of god says wives submit to your husbands as to the lord so may hugot ka if you really love the lord and if you follow what the Word of God is saying, love one another as I have loved you. To you, wives, the Word of God is telling us that you must submit to your husbands as to the Lord. That is the language of love. Second, to the husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. So, palagi po may hugot. Ngayon, how can you love your wife kung wala kang hugot? Siguro, you learn it. No? Well, as, as I shared, love or feeling of love is relative. It might grow or it might diminish. Diba? Pagka hindi kayo nagkaayos, ngayon, isa po yan sa pinag-uusapan din dito sa ating bansa. No? Naipasa yung divorce law. Mga kapatid, we need to think about this. We need to think and we need to pray about this. Why? Is it because the relationship no? was not able to, you know, to grow or they don't fit to each other. Well, this is the nearest neighbor that we have, our spouses. Second is our children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Pansinin niyo po, palagi po mayroong hugot, di po ba? Obey your parents in the Lord. And parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instruction. Sa ibang salin po ay in the instruction of the Lord. Sa atin po, mga um, employee, workers, and even to those who are leaders, you are head, you are employers. Ito po ang sinasabi, love or slave, slaves, obey your human master with fear and trembling and do it with a sincere heart as though you were serving Christ. Meron po ako narinig sa TV, sa, sa television. Actually, sabi niya, natuwa ako, no? Sabi niya, you can stay longer where you are right now, kung nasaan ka nagtatrabaho, if you love your work. No? If you love your work. But if you do not love your work, well, you can easily, you know, detach yourself. Master, behave in the same way toward your slaves and stop using threats. No? Or don't put them in the prison, something like that. No? Remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven. No? You and your uh, you and your master belongs to the same master in heaven who judges everyone by the same standard. By the same standard. Brothers and sisters, the Lord said, Love. As I have loved you. And the, the most, the, the, the people around us, the nearest people around us are these people. Are these people. Do we love them as Christ loved us? Well, 
I would like you to read this passage. It is a very, you know, familiar passage in the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I would like us to read it. Uh, let's read it all together. Ready? Go. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Love never fails. The Lord said, love as I have loved you. Can we change the word into third person? And let's change it, yung word na love, let's change it into the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No? So basahin po natin, love, instead of love, let's change it into the name of Jesus. Okay? And then yung pong mga pronoun, let's use it, he. Okay? So let's uh, read it all together. Ready? Go. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. He does not envy. He does not boast. He is not proud. He is not rude. It is, he is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. He keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. He always protects, always trusts, always hopes, Always perseveres. Jesus never fails. And that, diba? Again, Jesus said, Love as I have loved you. Love as I have loved you. Now, let's make it personalized. Okay? Let's make it personal. Can we change the name of Jesus into our names? Can we recite this again? Using first person, okay? Using first person, let's recite it all together. Using our names instead of, of love, instead of Jesus, let's use our names. And the first person, I, okay? Okay, let's read it all together. Your name, ha? Banggitin mo yung pangalan mo. Ready? Go. Both is patient. Both is kind. I does not envy. I does not boast. I am not proud. I am not rude. I am not self-seeking. I am not easily angered. I keep no record of wrongs. Both does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. I always protect, always trust, Always hope, always persevere, but never fail. Uh, what do you feel about that? What do you feel about that? Parang ang hirap banggitin kasi ako ba yan? Di ba? Ako ba yan? Hindi ako yan eh. That's not me. When the Lord Jesus said, love as I have loved you. Love as I have loved you. When we read this passage that way, the result is humbling, you know? Yun po yung naramdaman ko when I first did this. For we recognize that we do not love as Jesus loves. We do not even understand such love. And we find ourselves praying, Oh Lord, teach me to love other as, as you love me. Then we will grow, I believe, brothers and sisters. We will grow in the love and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sana po i-recite natin palagi yan. Ngayon po, pag nire-recite mo in using the first person, you. Sana po, magkaroon tayo ng reflection. Do I love others 
as Jesus loved. Brothers and sisters, as I close, the Word of God said that by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The mark no, of a true disciples of Jesus is that we love others as Christ loved us. If you haven't experienced the love of Jesus, how can you love? How can you express the love, that love toward others? No. If you haven't experienced the love of Jesus, you will not express it. You will not share it. And you will you don't have that capacity to, to love others kasi wala kang paghuhugutan. But you know, Christ defined a disciple as one who loved others as He loved us. If this is your first time and you haven't yet received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you haven't, you know, you still have not experienced the love of Jesus in your life, and therefore, you do not know how to love others as Christ loved you. Brothers, this is the perfect time for you to receive Christ's love, to receive Christ's forgiveness. Be forgiven and to experience Christ's promise of eternal life. I assure you, if you will accept that you are sinners and ask God for forgiveness, He will forgive you. And believe that Jesus died on the cross because of His great love for you. Confess. Confess that Jesus is your Lord and follow Him. Obey His word. Love others as Christ loved well, I believe that you are here, all of us, we're here because we are recipients of God's love through Jesus Christ. Amen? We are all recipients of God's love through Jesus Christ. You were once, we were once a sinner, or we were once sinners but received God's forgiveness because He loves us so much. And now, the Lord is continually working, actually, through love. And that's why He is inviting you. Inviting you. Inviting all of us no, to partner with Him to love others as Christ. 